Welcome to worship this morning. This is a service for Sunday the 17th of October 2021. The written order of service is available and has been emailed to you if you are on our email list. If not, please send me a message and I can forward it to you. There are many places you could be this morning, but you have chosen to be here, where we learn how to live in God's kingdom. Welcome to this place, full of music, of words of prayer, yet also filled with danger, where we encounter a wisdom we cannot always understand. Welcome to God's house, the most dangerous place in town, where we talk about and with God and are reduced to silence so we may hear the call to discipleship. You can pause here if you like as you go through the hymns and prayers and the Bible reading, which is Mark chapter 10, verses 32 to 45. Something I've heard about lately is confirmation bias. This is where we look for things that agree with our opinion. So, for example, if you think people with blue eyes have a higher IQ than people with brown eyes, you will read articles that agree with you and find ways to disagree with articles or research that says eye colour is not associated with IQ. You might have noticed this in the climate change debates and other discussions in the public sphere. This passage from Mark this morning begins with Jesus telling the disciples for the third time that he will be arrested and killed. Still, the disciples don't get it. The disciples have seen Jesus in action, healing, teaching, feeding, miracles, they have left their home and family to follow, literally follow and walk with him. So why might they not understand or acknowledge what Jesus is saying about his arrest and death? I wonder if confirmation bias is at play here. So the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah, a saviour, someone from the line of David who would bring them liberation. And Jesus was making all the right moves, saying all the right things. So surely he is amassing a mighty army to overthrow the Roman occupiers of Israel. Once again, Israel would be great and free, ruled by people who feared and worshipped God. But we know, and the disciples were not ready to admit, that the freedom Jesus was offering was not freedom from Roman occupation. Jesus was not preparing an army of warriors to take on the might of Rome. Jesus was preparing the way for a new kingdom, one that was so different to the current systems of the world, it was hard to imagine what it might be like. James and John, brothers, asked Jesus if they could sit at his left and right in the new kingdom. Traditionally, those who sat next to the king or leader were powerful. It was a place of honor. When you are at an event, maybe a wedding, who sits at the top table? Who sits with the parents of the bride and groom and who sits at the back corner? Maybe it's the same with a rotary changeover. Some of the meeting. But soon the places at the left and right of Jesus will be those crucified with him. And Jesus tells the disciples again that those who are great are those who serve. This new way of living, the way of Jesus, does not follow the ways of Rome or any other empire. Honour and status is not about wealth or prestige or the number of slaves you own. Being great is not about the size of your army, but the way you serve, 
the way you live for others. Then this final sentence in our reading. The son of man did not come to be a slave master, but a slave who will give his life to rescue many people. You may be more familiar with this version from the New Revised Standard Version. For the Son of Man came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. One of my favourite writers on the Gospel of Mark is Ched Myers. And he writes, the term, ransom, referred to the price required to redeem captives or purchase freedom for indentured servants. Jesus promises then that the way of servanthood has been transformed by the human one into the way of liberation. It is 20 months since life changed dramatically due to COVID. Since then, we've been able to meet at times, sometimes masked, sometimes not, sometimes singing, sometimes not. At times, we have not been able to visit family and friends. We've missed birthday celebrations and funerals. And we return to return, we yearn to return to normal. But what is normal? Like James and John, we do what humans do best. We fall back on what we know, on what's comfortable, how the world always worked. And we hope and we pray that the world has not and will not change as much as it already has and as much as we know it will. What once was is not working anymore. We know that deep in our hearts and souls and we don't know how to fix it. The world around us is changing. It feels chaotic at times out of our control, confusing and frustrating. For James and John, they have heard Jesus talk three times now about his impending death. I imagine they may have been confused as well, for their idea of a Messiah does not include this kind of death. But Jesus is simply affirming what the world does to those who put their trust in love and follow it through in every aspect of their lives. The disciples are fixated on the rewards for their actions, but that is not what is, is, is significant. It's the ability to trust love and live it out in the world that is the right response to the call of Jesus. And the disciples miss the point completely. The kind of power they seek is the very power that will have Jesus crucified. Once Jesus enters Jerusalem, the world will change. We live on the other side of the cross and empty tomb. And still when we don't have answers or there don't seem to be any answers in the immediate future, our human pattern is to partner with power rather than hold hands with humility. I am one of those people who wants the answers and I want them now and I want all of them. I want to know what's going to happen. I want to be able to plan and not have those plans changed by COVID or aging or ill health or anything else. I'm human. I want the security of knowledge. And Jesus asks me to trust in love. In this passage, we are reminded that our faith is not in power or knowledge, but in love and service. Our faith is not in power or knowledge, but in love and service. I know it is not much of an advertising slogan, but Christianity isn't about slogans, but a way of life that offers freedom, freedom to love freedom to trust in God, freedom to serve. Where is God calling you to let go of normal? Where is God calling you to live 
Hình nhỏ. May God bless you as you reflect on this word today. The hymn I've put next is a spendthrift lover is the Lord. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but please watch the YouTube clip. You can pause while you do that and follow the prayers and I'll be back with the, with the blessing. May God open our eyes to see as God sees. May God open our ears to hear as God hears. May God open our hearts to love as God loves. May God open our lives to live as God lives. And may God bless you with joy and dreams. May God bless you with hope and faith. May God bless you with peace and a readiness to take risks with the Holy Spirit, this day and always. Amen.